Okay, beautiful soul family, and welcome back to On Another Level. And today is about the Sabbath. Now, today is Friday, but this is for tomorrow's viewing. Um, and I'm recording it today. You know, as I understand the Sabbath much more, it's about honoring. It's a day of honoring. And so I was in the midst of prayer, and God was showing me, ugh, just so beautiful, a beautiful message. Um, beautiful soul family, I thank you so much for subscribers. <coughs> I thank you so much for your love. And I ask that you um, take time, even if you work on the Sabbath, to take time to honor God. I would like um, to talk about Jesus. And as I was in the midst of prayer, you know, it's just, I'm just thankful, okay? And um, Jesus is our mediator. <coughs> and excuse me for, it's really early in the morning. But the thing is, is that when Jesus was here, Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshua, stated, as you see me, you are seeing God. And they did not like this. They considered that to be blasphemy, but they did not know who Jesus is, was. It was, is, and will always be, okay? And um, as I was praying, I was like, you know, first, it's about reverence, you know. We are, um, we are the body of Christ, and <clears throat> it is the covering of the blood of the Lamb that I come before the throne of God even at the footstool okay because the heavens is the throne and the earth is the footstool now I was just thinking you know as I'm coming into prayer usually I give God the honor the glory and the praise but I felt like I needed to make sure that I am under the right you know, like not just coming to God, but <coughs> um, in the name of Jesus coming to God, you see. And so what I was refreshed with is that I have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is that of which is the oneness of God, Jehovah, and Jesus. And that Jesus is our mediator, but by the means of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> we can come on to God, pray to God. And it just was so intimate for me. And then also, um, what I was shown was that, you know, there are a lot of wicked people who, um, they like to do a transference of energy where they will do whatever to take your energy and transfer their energy onto you. And the thing about it is, is that we are to use peace, we are to use love, we are to use joy, we are to use our first fruits. It's, you know, the thing about what I was being shown is that with the Holy Spirit, we are most abundant. We have love, we have joy, we have peace, you know, um, forever fruits. Okay, and um, people that are wicked, they understand that. And so, in so many ways, shapes, or forms, <coughs> they will go after those fruits. Um, but you must use your fruits and be knowing of our fruits as we are living our life. Okay, so what's so interesting is that Jesus, when he gave his life on the cross, there was that transference. We are here today because of that transference. He paid the ransom, which I consider, <coughs> I don't know, it's one of my voice, but I consider it a 
I, uh, when I think ransom, I think kidnapping, and pretty much that's that's what's happened. Because there was a temptation of different degrees, and there was a falling. We fell for it, and so therefore we were kidnapped, and Jesus came and paid a ransom, enslaved. You see, and so those who are coming to the awakening coming to the knowing that we are not slaves we are free amen and not just physically but spiritually okay and when we come to understand what Jesus did for us on the cross at the crossroads hallelujah as I brought here, so we're going on one path, and Jesus crossed that path, or we're going, we're just providing us a way out. <clears throat> in the Bible, it says that she got a, when we're caught up in tribulations, or we're caught up in so many things, um, Jesus, God, provides us the way out, and that way out is Jesus. And so as Jesus was on the cross, he gave his life. He gave his life willingly. And there was that transference where our debt was put upon him and ever and his salvation was put upon us. Hallelujah. But he didn't stop there because when he went into Sheol, the lower parts of the earth, he defeated death. Understand? And so, it's not, this is an experience. But in this experience, we are to reflect God. We are to reflect, reflect light. We are to put light on situations. We are to talk about the the grandeurness and the compassion and love that God and Jesus gave to humanity. And <clears throat> the Sabbath is about understanding all of it. Understanding creation. Understanding the divine plan of what God has for us. Blessed us. And then, yes, there was a fall. Satan is so wicked. But then God immediately brought forth a solution. And to really be present and understanding what we have. Okay? And as I as I say that, it's like I saw bondage chains locks being open and 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 chains falling to the ground it's the knowingness but it's up around our minds and that's why the helmet of salvation is so so that we can come out of matrices and fantasies what is so interesting is even in prayer i was like you know we put so much attention to the superheroes, a fantasy, but we overlook and we even question how Jesus saved us. Jesus is our superhero in reality, but some people also, they want to think that he didn't even exist, but they want to believe in superheroes. And the sad thing is that the world wants us to stay in fantasy because in fantasy we're enslaved in fantasy these people have power but in reality it is a tr it's truly the opposite and so we must come out of fantasy we must come out of matrix and understand the beauty and the compassion and the realness of Jesus' love of God's love and what's so interesting is um, as I was gearing up to, to to uh, speak about um, some scriptures I came to Mark chapter 11 now in Mark chapter 11 it talks about how Jesus 
had instructed his disciples to come to where a cult where it's tied up and if anyone asks he told them what to say and it, what I see about this as I continue to to uh, read through it Jesus provides the way as he got he put the stuff put garments and he sat on the colt the people put um, their garments and, and palm leaves or trees leaves on the path as the colt was going across and the thing about it is is that Jesus you know Jesus is our way Yahweh God Almighty provided a way which is Jesus so that we can go on that path to salvation he provided us a way out of enslavement hallelujah and what's so interesting is that the when the Israelites were coming out <clears throat> of enslavement Jesus provided the Lord provided the cloud by day went before them and provided the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night and it is so true how God and Jesus has not changed hasn't you know what's so interesting is that as I read further Mark chapter 11 verse 11 and it says, And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. <clears throat> and when he looked around about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were coming from Bethany, <clears throat> he was hungry. Now, I don't remember, you know, I'm still reading a lot of the Bible, and it's just such a great joy. But I don't remember... Um, and God has reminded me when Jesus did fast for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, but he did not turn the stones into bread. You see, now here is showing when he's hungry. And in verse 13, it said, and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything there on and when he came to it he found nothing but leaves for the time of things was not yet and Jesus answered and said unto it no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever and his disciples heard it and the thing about it is is that What is our first fruit? What is our fruit? What do we have to present as we are growing in our life? Is there growth in our life? Are we put are we utilizing our purpose to bring forth growth in our life so that when Jesus looks at us, as God is looking at us, what are we giving? You know, you know, what are we planting in our lives and going through the pressure and going through the birthing to present the first fruits? What are we presenting of our life? You know, it's like, okay, so I see you have life. This is your gift. This is your major talent, right? We had the manager, the parable of the manager that gave forth talents. And the one that had ten did much. The one that had five did much. And the one that had one didn't do much with it but hid it and so what are we doing with our lives are we hiding away our purpose or are we fully in our purpose and in the midst of our purpose what are we giving forth what is the fruits of our purpose you know um are we like Cain just giving uh, fruits that are partially damaged and spoiled? Because whenever we come against someone else's will, we have a harvest that comes in. What does that harvest look like? Or is it a, is, is a fatty? Is it is it a fatty calf that we can present unto the Lord? Hallelujah. And it's like, okay, based on what we know that God has did for us, we are saying, here God, we offer our back unto you this. And it's something that we willingly give. But what is the harvest that we give up? What is the fruits that we give up? 
give on to God. Okay? And so as we take time on the Sabbath and we say, God Almighty, we thank you. You know, usually, you know, there, there is a cause and effect. Because God has done so much for us, we are motivated. We are enthused to just, you know, gather so much together. God is showing me about a birthday party and someone getting together a birthday party or a festivity. And they, and what, what encourages them, what enthusi enthusiasm enthuses them to do. Is they they put their all in. They're making sure there's flowers. They're making sure there's 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 drinks and food and candy and decorations. They're making sure that all the guests are coming. They're making sure that the guests um they uh, RSVP. You know they're making sure everything is great for this festivity. Hallelujah. And they want everything to go out perfectly well. And the thing about it is, is, what are we doing with our life to prepare? Like, what, what is our preparation? What, 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 what is our priorities in reference to Jesus the Christ? Because Jesus, which is not a fantasy, did something so profound cross all of our paths with that of which was done in the past. But, hallelujah, it's forevermore. Are we enthused by him giving his life, him paying the ransom, him setting the tone for us to live our life? Are we grateful for what God, the beauty of what God did? Because it shows in the Bible how Abraham, God had asked Abraham to give his, his son. And for God, because of the love that he has for God, he did it. But God was just didn't have him do it. But the thing is, is God did it. God gave us his only begotten son. To give his life for us. But not only to give his life for us, but to teach us. To set us straight. To heal us. Set us free from bondage. And there's not any role. There is not any... There is not any writer that can recreate that. You know, there are many movies out there, but the thing about it is, is that we ourselves must come to understand what has been done for us. We take ownership of things that are fantasy. We're breaking our necks and looking at trailers and doing all these different things that are in, in fantasy. But we need to say, God Almighty, I thank you. Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for what you gave for us. Gave to us. So that we can live this day. And as we're living this day, how are we enthused? How are we motivated to give you the first fruits? And in giving you the first fruits, what is it? Is it a fatty calf? Is it our own life that is a living sacrifice? Or is it GMO fruits? Hallelujah. And so this is what I was shown, the transference. How we are able to live, how we are able to be here, glory, hallelujah. And so just as we're, you know, there are those that get excited about the next Spider-Man movie, the next... Marvel movie. We need to see the marvel of something that took place, an event that took place in real life. God is telling me displacement. There is a displacement, but God's children. Hallelujah. Woo! God's children. See, because it's not a facade. God's children. Knows the importance of what God did. 
The children of the world could care less. But for those who love God and love Jesus, and for those who understand what has been done, we say, you know what? No. We take time to honor God. Honor Jesus. Thank you. I am living because you gave your life for me. It's about, you know, we, we possess things that are not of our energy. And we claim it as ours. Bad, bad thoughts, negative thoughts about ourselves. And we actually believe it. <clears throat> but what we need to do is to edge that out. And open up ourselves to God Almighty and Jesus the Christ. And say, thank you so much for what you gave for me. It's like a soothing balm that goes ever so deep. Thank you. And this is how we can feel the love for ourselves. You know, what I'm getting is just the overlooking. We're overlooking our own healing. We're overlooking the love that has happened for us by focusing on that of which is a fantasy. By focusing on the lies of the world. We go into the word of God. Hallelujah. And we're able to see the truth. And the truth is what makes us free. We are nourishing our souls, beautiful soul family. But the children of God are the ones that are going to do it. Because I can talk, talk, talk. You can take the horse to the water. But you can't make the horse drink it. And so really it's about you. If you are a child of God. You will know what I'm talking about. And will be in agreement. Hallelujah. And it will fill you up with joy. Even right now. <laughs> because this is... We have been saved. We have our superhero. You know, there are people who give their life to save someone else. And they remember. Jesus gave his life for all of us. Amen. All of us. Now, what's so interesting with this fig tree. Jesus was hungry. And he came to his fig tree happily thinking there was fruit. But there was no fruit. And so. Jesus answered and said unto it. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. That's how powerful Jesus is. Jesus is, was, is and will always be. And so that's just something to really think about, beautiful soul family. Now I wanted to go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 to 11. Okay, and it reads, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is and rested the seventh day wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it that means made it holy okay and so as we come into the remembrance you know God Almighty thank you for our life 
Now I say this, if I had a highlighter and I'm going to actually try to put this here, <clears throat> where it said God created the heaven and the earth. Not the earths with a plural. And so there's a lot of foolery going on. I've been seeing it in movies. I've been seeing it in series. And it's about programming to have us believe in such things. And this is why it's so important to keep the, for us to be a good steward in keeping this day holy. Because they will, they would wish that there was many earths, but there isn't. Okay, and in Revelations it says that the heaven and the earth may pass away, but the word of God is forevermore. Amen. And so when we come to understand that beautiful soul family, it's like, wait a second, they want us to believe that there's many earths. But it is not so. You see, because God is the creator. Now, the thing about it is, is that um, when God creates, nothing comes back void. To create many earths with many a different people, you know, that's, again, a fantasy that Satan will want you to believe. But here in the Bible, which God doesn't hold back. He said, because of the lack of knowledge, my children perish. And so because of that lack, God doesn't even deal with anything of lack. But the world does. The world utilizes lack as a tool. Utilizes fear as a tool. But this is not of God's divine plan where God blessed us and God blessed this holy day to remind us of our salvation, to remind us that we are free. We are not enslaved. Okay? And so, anyways, as we come to know this beautiful soul family, we can't go wandering. You see, it was Cain that was wandering, okay, in the land of Noah, which means wanderer. But we are knowing that God loves us. And we know that God prepares us. God teaches us. God is with us. Great is God that is within us than that of which that is in the world. Hallelujah. And so that's why all these temptations and distractions are all about. So that we don't go within to know the truth. And so beautiful soul family on this day. On the Sabbath. It's about being grateful. It's about being refreshed by love. True acts of love, not fantasy. So beautiful soul family, I thank you so much. Have a beautiful and wonderful day. And continue to be blessed by God the Almighty. In Jesus' name.